there, there. Um, fractals. <laughs> My name is Walid Mustafa, and this is Harshal Medical Society. I'm you should have done it. What are fractals? Well, there are two technical definitions. There are mathematical chaotic shapes that are shapes with a non-integer dimension, meaning that they are not 1D, 2D, 3D, etc. And they are self-similar. Well, they don't have to be self-similar, but it's a popular definition. Dimensions. This will relate later on. So dimensions. Uh, you think of a line. A line is one-dimensional. It has length. And if you multiply by two, so now there's two lines, it'll be double its length, obviously. Next, a square, you double its length and width. Scaling it by a factor of two, its area is now four, two squared. You do a cube now, you can notice a pattern here. You multiply by two, uh, it's dimension three, so it'd be two cubed, which is eight. It's now eight times this uh, this large cube is now eight times the small cube. Next, we have the Sierpinski's triangle. It is uh, double its length, as you can see, but its area it's now three times itself. Well, okay. So we know that it's now two to the power of its dimension, which is, as you can see, the trend here: two to the one, two to the two, two to the three. So, using simple maths, you do d is equal to log 2, 3, which is approximately 1.585. So, this year's species triangle has a dimension of approximately 1.585, non-integer. Next, we have fractals in nature. So, you guys have seen this in the title page. It's the Romanesque's broccoli. It's just a cone with smaller cones on it, and the broccoli. The fern consists of many smaller leaves, branching off as you can see here, the leaves looking almost identical to the original leaf. Finally, we have a snowflake. Uh, this is a fractal snowflake, and this is the original snowflake. They are pretty similar. I mean, uh, that is the blood vessel with multiple smaller uh, blood vessels coming out. So you can see it's so similar. But here we have the UK countryside. The UK countryside is, as you can guess, not self similar. But it satisfies the definition of not being an integer dimension. So, I'm sure you guys have asked, why is it important to medicine? Well, Modern medicine involves examining systems in the body to determine if something is malfunctioning. So here you have blood vessels. This would be the normal, this is abnormal, normalized, inadequate. So these two, as you can tell, are quite bad. And uh, our fractal geometry tells us that this is quite bad, whereas this is, these two are great and also good. So fractal math quantify, describe, and diagnose, which, as you can guess, will perhaps soon cure diseases. Uh, a question? Uh, are these images of brain scans? No. They're not. They're just blood vessels, computerized. Okay, so, with modern imaging equipment, such as CT scans and MRI machines, you can tell we use a lot of computers, and computers operate a lot of math. So, make something quicker, we could find a lot more digital, digital data if we use fractals as they are mathematical shapes. And once again, making sense of the data is hard for doctors and it's time consuming. So computers can just do it for us. So now we have cancer and tumours. The use of fractal dimension to classify tumours based on malignancy shows great potential. So we can find out whether a tumor is malignant or benign. Uh, here we have a graph. Uh, we can find that the red dots are malignant and the green dots are benign. So a malignant tumor would have a lower fractal dimension than a benign one. So therefore we can, the, it's a very high. So as you can see here, the benign 
could be classified as malignant. However, it's incredibly unlikely. So, under a magnification of four times, yes. How do you measure the accuracy of like, the uh, magnification process? Oh, the method is incredibly complex. It's just... I was not. <laughs> they use a bunch of computers and stuff to do that, I guess. Can you give like a brief method on how to gain the practical number? Okay, so there's a formula. Uh, it's n to a little e b, yeah, to the power of b. And they just find d by using the log of that little e over the log n. Just the way it's. So it's just no, it's not. Just find the log sort of stuff. The stuff. <laughs> That's how they find the fractal dimension. It's very complex, as you can tell. I can really understand. Okay, so multi class classification is still hard. Uh, I mean, there's not a lot of research for this, and uh, hopefully, in the future, there will be a lot more because, as you can see, it works kind of. Uh, accuracy of 0 0.556, but that can easily be improved. So the ability of fractal dimension to distinguish between benign and malignant seems formidable, given that reduction in the size and scope for the training set had little effect on the classification accuracy. So average 0 0.964, still great. So I just want, I just got a small question. So um, are we saying that in the future we can use, uh, because currently to identify um, malignancy or if it's benign, we would take a biopsy, right? Yeah. But so are we saying that this would in the future remove the need of biopsies because they can be quite invasive and painful at times? Or are we saying that it'll be this will be a primary step which will indicate if even a biopsy is needed? Like for example, if it shows benign, then they might as well not do a biopsy. So what what do you think will be the future of this? Well, I think that fractals within medicine have shown quite a lot of potential. And I feel that it might replace, as you said. But time will tell. We don't know. There could be new research. You know. So next, heartbeat and lungs. So uh, as you can see, uh, this is the heart rate. This is lungs. Yeah. And uh, the cardiovascular system exhibits a lot of fractal complexity. So here we have a lot of cell symmetry. As you go down, you see it repeating itself. And over in the lungs, you see it splitting off into two, maybe two to the 23rd. And uh, fractals identify pathological patterns of cardiac decomplexification. So that's about the heart rate. So what it's saying is it will identify whether uh, the heartbeat is no longer fractal, because heartbeats are, as you can see, like fractals, there's a fractal heartbeat. But um, yeah, it will identify whether it's become too sim uh, self similar or, you know, it just constantly is too simplified. And uh, so, what has it shown us? So, uh, the conclusion is osteoporosis and bone texture, as you can see here, can be identified using fractals because as you go down, you see it's smaller breaking up, but over here, it's larger open. So the fractal dimension is different, and we can spot that. These lens are uh, diffractive lens, so otherwise known as diabolical lens. Uh, they are called this because it's based on a fractal st uh, structure. So these are actually fractal structures. Like, they constantly are self-similar and they're used to fix tide eyesight and replace crystalline lens in cataract surgery. So cataract is replacing lens to the eye. Um, so yeah, fractals are incredibly important because, and it's within us, uh, as in like the lungs, they are over 700 square feet. They are quite, the area is quite large, but it fits in such a small place. And that's because of fractals. Once again, relating to that UK coastline, if you were to use, let's just say, 100 meter lines, 100 meter ruler, sorry, to measure that coastline, it'd be smaller than if we used more accurate uh, rulers. So one meter rulers around that UK coastline. And that's because of the increased accuracy and fractals are incredibly complex. So 
there's one more thing. Uh, so the futures of fractals could be application of fractals in the regeneration of skin tissue. There's not a lot of, I mean, fractals are a relatively new topic in medicine, so we can only be imaginative, but as, as being studied between the structure of blood uh, conduits of the human body and fractals. And so possibly, I'm not saying for certain, but possibly the regeneration of whole organs for use in transplant is under investigation. And um, <coughs> yeah, fractals relate to medicine and they are the future, hopefully.